right. Hello, everyone. My name is Trenton Ferguson. Um, at the time of this abstract submission, I was an internal medicine PGY3 at the Virginia Tech Carillion Internal Medicine Residency. So thank you so much for having me. Uh, today, I'll be discussing a case having to do with trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole induced psychosis in a patient with Down syndrome that I found interesting and hopefully you will as well. So a little introduction. Um, transient psychosis related to Bactrim has been described previously, and of these descriptions, the majority occurred in patients that were either immunocompromised and or elderly. Uh, so just to highlight this, I'm going to talk about some reviews and cases. In 2014, uh, there was a systemic review that identified 15 cases associating antibiotics and psychosis of these. Bactrim was one of them. Another review in 2014 noted different neurotoxic effects, one of them being psychosis associated with, associated with different antibiotics, one of those antibiotics being Bactrim. Um, and also noted in this review was that the elderly are at increased risk of these adverse effects, um, and their proposed mechanism was due to changes in pharmacokinetics as we age. Uh, another article in 2012 discussed a case of acute psychosis related Bactrim and the treatment relating Bactrim uh, and the treatment of pneumocystis in an HIV-infected patient. And then the last one in 2013 that I found, an article in 2013 discussed a case of acute psychosis following Bactrim after an allergenic hematopoietic stem cell transplant. Uh, so those are the majority of the cases that I found. Um, upon literature review, I didn't uh, see any cases relating Bactrim uh, induced psychosis in a patient with Down syndrome, so potentially this could be a novel case, and I will describe that case next. Um, so a 46-year-old female came to the emergency department after experiencing distressing uh, visual hallucinations for two days. Um, these hallucinations included things like spiders, scorpions. Um, at one point she was describing it looked like uh, people had hands coming out of their abdomens, so as you can imagine, very distressing for the patient. Uh, past medical history was significant for Down syndrome. Um, no other past medical history um, that the patient or the patient's mother who was with the patient at presentation knew of. Um, no history of hallucinations, no history of psychosis prior to this. Of note, the patient was started on Bactrim two days ago for treatment of a skin ulcer involving her left buttock, uh, but no other recent medication changes. Uh, the patient did deny any alcohol or other substance use, uh, denied any headache, neck pain, or fever. Um, upon physical exam, the patient's vitals were within normal limits. Um, the physical exam was unremarkable, um, other than she was actively hallucinating during the time of our physical exam. Um, at one point, she felt like someone was shaking her bed vigorously, uh, but neuro exam was unremarkable. Uh, we did check a Brzezinski's, that was negative. Um, and the left buttock ulcer was healing appropriately. Um, we did perform laboratory analysis and imaging. Um, both of them were unremarkable. Labs included CBC, CMP, urinalysis, urine drug screen, B12, and a TSH. Um, imaging included a chest X-ray, a CT head and neck. And again, uh, those were unremarkable. Um, so without really another uh, diagnosis uh, that we could think of at the time for this acute psychosis, we thought maybe it was medication related. So we did stop the Bactrim, uh, admitted the patient, observed the patient for several days, by day two, the patient's hallucinations were gone. And um, so we decided to discharge the patient, recommending that she avoid Bactrim in the future. And to this date, the patient has not had any recurrence of hallucinations. So just moving on to discussion and conclusion here, um, Bactrim is a commonly prescribed antibiotic with multiple reports. Um, particularly um, in the immunocompromised, um, uh, multiple reports of, of related psychosis, particularly in the immunocompromised. Um, patients with Down syndrome are inherently immunocompromised. So just to highlight this, uh, there was an article in 2011 that discussed why patients with Down syndrome are inherently immunocompromised. And the mechanism 
business proposed in that article included defects in neutrophil chemotaxis and reduced specific antibody responses to antigen um, as seen uh, an example for following immunization. Um, the exact mechanism of this adverse effect is unknown. Um, upon my review, I found two different articles, one in 2016 and one in 22, that uh, proposed a mechanism, and they happened to propose the same mechanism. Um, so uh, they proposed that Bactrim does inhibit dihydrofolate reductase, uh, which reduces the production of the active form of folic acid, which is tetrahydrofolate. And folate deficiency is associated with neuropsychiatric sequela. Um, I think this would be unlikely in our patient. Uh, our patient did not present with a macrocytic anemia, um, but we did uh, we, we did not check a folate, so I don't know for sure if there was any underlying folate deficiency. Um, and then I put here that you know patients with Down syndrome may be subject to bias. Uh, the bias I'm talking about here would be an anchoring bias. Um, and that would be because we know that patients with Down syndrome are at increased risk for psychosis compared to the population without Down syndrome. Um, this was highlighted in an article in 2015 uh, that discussed that patients with Down syndrome had significantly higher rates of psychosis in comparison to individuals with other intellectual disabilities. Um, so kind of in conclusion here, um, a relatively small patient population does make it difficult to determine just how complication uh, how, how common this complication is. Um, if similar cases are described in the future, this may indicate a need to consider other antimicrobials in this potentially vulnerable patient population. Vulnerable patients with Down syndrome are inherently immunocompromised, and it does appear that this medication uh, adverse effect may be more common in patients that are immunocompromised, and that these patients may be subject to um, anchoring bias where uh, we as providers feel like the adverse effect is due to a more organic etiology rather than a iatrogenic one. And these are all my references for those articles. So thank you so much and any questions? Thanks so much, Trenton. Um, do you know if this patient had uh, any kind of early onset dementia um, that we see in, in some of the, the aging Down syndrome patients that might have predisposed them to uh, psychosis? That's a great question. Um, I do not know for sure. Um, uh, that was not asked on the initial um, um, history, but uh, that's, that's a certainly a good point. Mm -hmm.